Hello ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a Friday and um, the 10th day of March and we are still celebrating women at Smart24 TV and we want to wish women a very happy Women's Week, a happy Women's Month. And my name is Anthony. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Anthony Sebale. You can also get to chat with us via our comment section in the YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Smart24 TV Live and across that channel you can find all the content the latest and of course uh, our past content you can find it there as well on the different uh, business topics that we do handle here at the station we are at float 42 nile avenue kampala where we hail to bring you the latest business updates and uh, we are here to give you a dose of the financial markets uh, what happened on thursday and what should we expect as we wind up uh, one of the busiest weeks in Wall Street and the busiest weeks here in the East African markets as well. And looking ahead for the big earnings, especially for uh, the companies that are closing uh, their financial year in 2023, that is uh, the month of March. So uh, it's a big, big time and uh, definitely we are very glad that you're choosing Smart24 TV uh, for that content. Now, remember, this show is probably brought to you by Altex. And with Altex, we are saying you can buy bonds in East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, name it, at the best interest rates. All you need to do is to simply grab your phone. Doesn't matter if it's a smartphone or not. And dial star 29 to hash to experience the magic at Zabu and with Altex East Africa. With Altex, we are making trade more accessible and giving us a chance also to get uh, to utilize our mobile money and uh, get to uh, invest in the bonds across East Africa. You can also get uh, to open uh, with the market at exactly 15 past 8 a.m. and trade all day long up to at least 15 minutes past 3 p.m. East African Standard Time. That's why with Altex East Africa, we are saying you can do something new. Now, let's get into the trading of Thursday. Thursday seems a pretty busy day on the Uganda Securities Exchange uh, compared to the previous few days that we have seen on the market. At the moment, in aggregate, at least five listings on the Uganda Securities Exchange participated in the trades. And uh, disappointingly, at least we had six losers on the market. However, we had at least five participating companies, which is a pretty bigger number from the average which we've had this week. And um, that goes a long way in saying that the markets ended stronger and with more participation from the public. At the moment, Jubilee Holdings Limited lost the most value on the Uganda Securities Exchange after shading off at least 3.69%. Um, down to a price of 5,122.91 Ugandan shillings. NMG, National Media Group, also shedded off at least 2.92%, uh, down to 419.60 Ugandan shillings per share. Um, Equity Bank Limited lost at least 2.24% of their value as well. And uh, this was down to a price of 1,276. Uh, 0.06 Ugandan shillings and another loser here was sent um, after recording at least 1.03 percent that was shed off after Thursday tradings down to a price of 257.51 Ugandan shillings. East African Breweries Limited at least lost 1.01 percent of their trading price down to a price of 5,000 and 15.3 uh, Ugandan shillings and uh, this was also following a quite uh, steep decline over the last week uh, from averages of at least 5,300 to now averages of 5,015 shillings uh, on Thursday uh, meaning East African Breweries Limited has definitely uh, been one of the biggest losers for the markets this entire week um, Kenya Airways lost at the day uh, at the end of the day on uh, at least 0.6 percent loss and down to a price of 110.07 Ugandan shillings. The top movers were led by Stanbic Bank Uganda. Stanbic Bank Uganda had the biggest volume of trading at exactly 396,596 
shares that were recorded. As if that is not enough, um, Standard Bank Uganda maintained their price at 21 shillings. Uh, despite ending with this very huge volume and uh, recently you understand that Stan Big Bank has been rallying the Uganda Securities Exchange with so many shareholders getting to uh, interest themselves in this particular stock. Now Stan Big Bank Uganda is part of Africa's leading financial services group that is Standard Bank and this is based in South Africa and is the largest financial institution in Uganda licensed under the Financial Institutions Act 2004. Last year, Stan Big Bank Uganda was one of the biggest stocks to be talked about on the Uganda Securities Exchange, ending the year, at least in the fourth quarter of 2022, on top of the movers list, meaning it had the biggest volume overall last quarter, in the last quarter of 2022. There, the company also comes very close in competition in turnover despite the smaller price compared to stocks like Umeme and MTN that come as the biggest uh, turnover boys on the Uganda Securities Exchange last year. But also uh, to mention but a few, one of the feats that uh, Stanbic Bank Uganda has been able to achieve is their dividend and they have been able to dedicate themselves on dividend issuance. In 2020, the Bank of Uganda, uh, through, of course, uh, the Bank of Uganda, actually, through the government of Uganda, held um, a suspension of all financial institutions' issuance of any sort of dividends in order to reserve capital, to see that uh, there was um, a little bit of stability because after the COVID-19 pandemic, we realized that uh, there was need for capital reservation, especially for financial institutions, so they can back up businesses that were failing in the economy and be able to uh, offer credit that was affordable. So uh, they cut back on expenditures, they cut back on things like dividends, which was actually a guideline or a regulation from the Bank of Uganda. Now, this ban took place in 2020, but was carried to the year 2021, and it was effected in the month of July, before uh, where we usually have that unveiling of the of the dividends and uh, the financial reports for the company around that time in July. And uh, at that moment, um, many banks were actually unable to issue that dividend due to the regulation, but also due to the fact that they were struggling financially. Well, that ban took place in 2020, but happened to also cut across 2021 and was just actually lifted in 2022. So for two years, companies like Bank of Baroda, DFCU Bank were not accepted to issue dividends under the gu guidelines and regulations of the Central Bank of Uganda, which is Bank of Uganda, basically. And um, something really surprising came from Stan Big Bank. Stan Big Bank was able, regardless of this ban, uh, to be able to reserve a hundred billion for their shareholders as dividend 50 billion for 2021 50 billion for 2022 and also uh, speaking about profitability Stanbic bank remained as one of those profitable financial institutions the most profitable financial institutions in the pandemic despite the odds uh, Stanbic Bank was able to withstand and be able to uh, beat the odds and come out still as a profitable company and even go ahead to issue a dividend. That's how strong and resilient uh, Stanbic Bank stock can actually prove to be. Currently on the Uganda Securities Exchange, Stanbic Bank Uganda is the fifth most valuable in terms of market capitalization. And this is the total value of their stock currently at 1.07 trillion Ugandan shillings. With this market capitalization, uh, the, entire, the entire market capitalization of this uh, company represents close to 5.29% of the entire Uganda Securities Exchange. At the moment, uh, with their 396,000 volume shares, uh, shares volume there, they had at least uh, 8.3 million that was traded in turnover on the Uganda Securities Exchange on Thursday. And uh, currently, when you look into the one-week performance, they have uh, slightly lost a little bit of value, 
which I lost yesterday but one on Wednesday from 23 shillings to 21 shillings and uh, we saw that of course during the Wednesday show that the stock slightly went down but this is not uh, nothing much to worry about yet as Stanford Bank is the number one most traded on stock and seems it's going to be for uh, the next couple of months because the volumes Stanbic has had are crazy compared to what other stocks could actually be able to even uh, imagine a reaching because in the last three months we are talking over 165 million shares and almost a quarter of these shares were sold out last week when we had a volume of uh, 60 million and a volume of 39 million together that makes about 90 million and uh, when you get 90 uh, out of the 165 million uh, that's pretty much close to a third of the entire uh, volume there that was transacted just within last week so there's a lot of hope and um, when you look at these uh, volumes here uh, the 39 million shares were traded with a gain of two shillings so that means in the recent past, uh, Stanbic Bank has been able to gain a two shillings, uh, a two shillings amount on their stock price just in a single day, where they traded 39 million shares, 777,000. That means a lot of value for the shareholder uh, there on the company. However, it lost this on uh, 7th of March. That was on Tuesday. And uh, that was to, uh, after a tune of at least 277,000 shares that were traded. On uh, Wednesday, it was Women's Day and the markets were closed. And probably uh, that's why we didn't have data for that day. Markets all over the world were closed because of uh, celebrating women. And uh, that was a very, very fantastic day, Women's Day. And uh, that's why probably you don't see any trading. But Stanford Bank has almost trading on every single day on average on the uganda securities exchange and that's the trading my friend from uh, stand big bank uganda to buy stock from stand big you just simply get yourself an scd account or a security central depository and uh, this is through the uganda securities exchange easy portal and after you open one you can be able to deposit a few uh, a few monies and then you can get to approach any stock broker who is licensed uh, by the capital markets authority to be able to buy or purchase stocks on your behalf on the uganda securities exchange um uh, besides stand big bank uganda mtn was another trader on uh, the market mtn traded at 175 shillings closing the day with the same price and uh, closed at least at 400 at rather 41,138 shares that were recorded and bank of baroda as well came in with a 28,000 volume uh, that is closing at 85.0 Ugandan shillings and uh, UCL or Uganda Clays also had at least 26,400 shares uh, closing at 15.0 Ugandan shillings and Mumeme at 1,810 shares uh, closing at 300 Ugandan shillings a pretty active day uh, compared to what we are using to uh, we're used to actually seeing on the Uganda Securities Exchange so uh, we definitely look forward to better trading next week and um, we're getting into the earnings seasons like I said and uh, during this time is a time to reevaluate. it's a time to uh, analyze it's a time to reflect it's a time to look into your portfolio as an investor and see what do I need to change um, where is the economy headed we've been having inflation uh, evade the market uh, the markets and actually uh, do a lot of harm uh, but uh, that their reports showing that inflation could be contracting in the near future and the size of uganda's economy is also um, expected to grow at least by the end of this financial year according to the reports from uh, the world bank at least to grow to 4.7 percent what does that mean for you as an investor and which sectors do you think are going to be the thing in the next a few uh, years in the next you must be a long-term thinker when it comes to investment and this is why you don't uh, speculate and say okay i think this price is going to go up so i get in and then you know you wait for a few weeks you will be disappointed be a visionary investor have a vision for the next five years for the next 10 years that's the way men and women have made money on the stock market i can give an example of Umeme, for example Umeme 
with that 300 shillings share, uh, uh, share price, they have at least gained 50% in the last, in the last about six months, right? But the shareholders who have never seen this game, the shareholders who have been in the company for years since listing in, 20, uh, in 2012 and haven't seen that value, they hadn't seen rather that value before those last six months. So it's, it's all about patience, it's all about having a vision for yourself, having a plan and following through that plan and getting to be resilient. It, the stock market is really a volatile market and can be a disappointing place. But if you, if you stay put, if you uh, remain resilient, if you remain relentless and consistent in the way you're investing, and of course, uh, very prudent because I, I always want you to be prudent. Investors seek advice from your financial advisors, but also uh, make those, take those decisions, make those big steps, take those risks. Definitely, you will be uh, a, a very great investor at the end of the day. Now, in summary, we had at least 18,400, 18, um, 800,000, uh, 846,000 shares traded on the market and these were after a data um eight, well it was 18.8 .8 million ugandan shillings that was accrued from 493,000 shares that were traded on thursday uh, the markets show at least a one percent improvement in volume and however a 69 percent decline in turnover basically looking back at the um at the tuesday tradings that's when we last started trading on the uganda securities exchange and regarding the performance of the indices, the benchmark index, the all share index, at least shed of 12.67 points uh, down to at least 1,174.3 points. And this was currently representing a one week loss of 2.72% and a four week loss of at least 3.49%. An overall year to date loss of 3.12% has also been registered. Getting over to the Nairobi Securities Exchange and uh, having a look at what uh, the markets were like on uh, the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Nairobi Securities Exchange, established in 1954, is the oldest and busiest stock exchange in East Africa, currently having at least 65 listings uh, with the main board, a growth enterprise board, and as well as a medium enterprise board. On Thursday, we had at least 48 companies participating in trading out of the 65, meaning at least 85% um, of the companies there traded. And uh, the day ended with 17 gainers and 22 losers. Nairobi Securities Exchange gained most after at least 9.57% was added to their stock price, closing at at least 6.64 Kenyan shillings per share. East African cables at least had 8.54% added and the East African Express Kenya at least had 5.51% added to their price. Flame Tree Group Holdings added at least 5.31%. On the losing side, uh, at least Olympia Capital Holdings uh, lost most for the day after a price depreciation of 9.52%. And this was closing at 2.47 Kenyan shillings per share, followed by Crown Paints Kenya at 7.89% and um, Total Kenya at 7.37% losses, whereas Younger Group had at least 6.82% that was shed off from their trading price. Um, regarding the volumes here, Safaricom recorded the biggest volume for the day after having traded close to 14.9 million shares. Safaricom recently has actually proved to be back to its feet after, of course, opening branches in Ethiopia, where they have been able to start uh, another journey of mobile phones and mobile money and their other M-Pesa services like they have them in Kenya. Now, Safaricom currently has at least 839 billion Kenyan shillings worth of market capitalization, wiping away almost half of the entire market capitalization on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, close to 45.9%. At the moment, um, Safaricom trades at 20.9295 shillings. Now, if you convert that to Ugandan shillings, you have at least um, 600 shillings because um, when you get 20 uh, times three uh, times the 30 shillings, which is kind of the average 
average pricing or rating for the Kenyan shillings against the Ugandan shillings. M, um, Safaricom has at least 600 shillings of uh, worth of, uh, of, of, a, of a share. So it's, it's not pretty cheap stock when you, when you come to Uganda. Um, in, um, on a, on a, when you look at uh, the trading on Thursday, at least 14.9 million shares were traded valued at 311 million Kenyan shillings. And um, when you look into their last few weeks and months, um, however, Safaricom has been losing quite some value in the last couple of days. Um, Safaricom began the year with 24.15 Kenyan shillings and has since then lost at least 13.3% in year-to-date loss. Therefore, this is the 55th in terms of Nairobi in, the, in terms of the Nairobi Securities Exchange year to date. So uh, there's been a little bit of, uh, little bit of a decline in price, and this could be viewed as um, as a means to get into the company, especially for local investors, because there was a very huge movement uh, of foreign investors out of uh, the Kenyan market, and this left a void for. Uh, more local investors definitely to get involved in the trading and by local investors of course i'm referring to east africa not just the kenyan so even you who is here in uganda you can't be uh, definitely a trader with uh, the nairobi securities exchange if you wish uh, so um we have at least in the last three months um uh, close to nine billion kenyan shillings traded on 402 million shares on safaricom making it the number one most traded on stock on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. KCB Group also had 1.65 million shares traded and Equity Group Holdings at least 478,900 shares and Centrum Investments Company with at least 314,500 shares that were traded. Regarding the performance of the NSE market indices, the benchmark index and SEO share index uh, shared of at least 0.42 points and this was after closing at 118.77 points. And the overall year to date loss currently is at least 6.83%. On the other remarkable indices like the NSE25, the NSE20, this struck the top 25 and top 20 stocks respectively. Uh, the NSE20 gained 0.64% and the NSE25 uh, shared of at least 0.48%. Overall, there was 51% decline in the volumes, uh, indicating a little bit of slow activity and 44% uh, decline in the turnover as well and 14% decline in the number of deals on the market. Uh, the market capitalization of the Nairobi Securities Exchange also depreciated uh, from 2 trillion to at least 1.85 trillion Kenyan shillings. And that's the trading, my friend, from uh, the Nairobi Securities Exchange. I want to remind you to uh, advocate for the integration of the markets here in East Africa. And um, this will be able to uh, break away the barriers that are currently holding back our markets here in East Africa, especially the barriers of, um, the, barriers of you know, the trade fees that are involved, the bureaucracy in the market, and the, 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 the access, inaccessibility to the market. So... Uh, we are we're still m making more efforts in that direction but we hope definitely that comes through uh, much quicker than anticipated getting over to the united states the u.s stocks opened thursday trading session uh, higher uh, following the labor market data that was weaker than expected and ahead of friday morning's key uh, february jobs report which will be of course this morning in the U united states unveiled Shortly after the opening bell, the S&P 500 uh, at least was up by 0.2%, whereas the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up by 0.4%, and the Nasdaq Composite was up by 0.1%. On uh, the weekly report on initial filings for unemployment insurance Thursday morning showed at least 211,000 claims filed last week, an increase of 21,000 uh, from the prior week and uh, the, what economists at Export, Oxford Economics had actually uh, called the first hint of weakness in this data. The jump in jobless claims uh, to at least 211k uh, last week uh, from 190k for, is the first sign 
of uh, weakness in the claims uh, that is uh, the, the claims data this year, uh, according to the U.S. economists. But it is still well uh, short of the 300k plus levels that would be consistent with a recession. Now, the Thursday trading session will serve as a bridge this time round uh, between two eventful uh, days of testimony from the Federal Reserve Bank Chairman, that is Jerome Powell, and Friday morning's key February jobs reports. This uh, morning, of course now it's not yet morning in the United States, but very soon the jobs reports are going to be released and that's going to do a lot. But also uh, testimony from uh, the Federal Reserve's bank chairman, that is the Central Bank of the United States, Mr. Jerome Powell, uh, definitely will uh, be um, something to ponder and see how that will affect the market. Thank you, my friend, for joining us once again and for checking us out. You can follow for more at Smart24 TV. The show is probably brought to you by Altex East Africa. Uh, that is the number one stock exchange where you can find securities uh, that are treasury bonds, exchange traded funds, and the like. With Altex, we are saying we can give you access to these markets on your phone. You just simply dial star 29 to hash to make a transaction of your mobile wallet onto the exchange and enjoy the magic. My name is Anthony and I'm very glad you joined us. More is yet coming uh, to come your way at Smart24 TV. We mean business 24 hours, seven days a week and we do drive it here in East Africa. See you tomorrow or rather Monday, definitely Friday. Uh, see you on Monday and definitely you know, we'll catch up with more. Bye for now. Twenty-four driving business.
ino internet when you can reach zungirizi ate kamera ya yoruma amyo banange ili andaka kubongo kuno mugano kwe nyini kuna kabodi supakati kuzinge zisalidua kwa ngotati kakusinse mtuwane na mkenda soka usasule pola mpola sinzi lunana mwasa tumusatu buli unaku we wangu lilo mgano kwa kabodi supa okufo kwa mtn kwefu nile gibibili iza ndata wa mtn buli mwezi okumane miezi munana wende mbuli le kabodi supakati kati okufo kuduka lia mtn wana mugwanga everywhere you go mtn ekule lawansu wa mateka gayu sisi of Uganda in a new international park. Jerry, 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 come!